sliding down coal tips, seen tall smoking chimney stacks and large spinning cog-like wheels that coexisted alongside air pumping stations and a thumping sound that was only noticeable when it stopped. The resonance of the coal mine sirens heard at times of shift changes or to alert the community of a mining accident was incongruously sadly missed when the coal mine closed for good. Valley people who had known nothing else were left orphaned by the parent that helped feed and punish them at the same time. I would like you to visualize valley people coexisting in contrasting environment where natural beauty of the landscape provided an escape from the beast below that pervaded the heart and lungs of a valley that vomited shadowy lifeless fossil fuel that smelt damp and musty like stomach acid regurgitated from an active calling. How fragile you are, my valley. The scars are profoundly deep, cause many a stoic collier to fall on his sword and weep. Green is my valley, not so green yesterday. The scars once horrific until the landscaper had his way. Miracles were performed with a little help from God, though the grey tips are gone and replaced with humorous sod. Do not forego your valley, now the pockmarks are obscured. Pay homage to your ancestors for what they once endured. Proud Britannic colliery fell in one foul swoop, its carcass dismantled and consumed like gourmand ice soup. Gilvach Goch rightly boasts its history, captured in books by author Katie Owen Pritchard. The famous Richard Llewellyn's How Green Was My Valley poetry, a small red valley, and songs written and performed by a local miner's son. Whence the six bells toll, Richard Llewellyn enjoyed his pint of ale. He sat amongst the colliers, conversed with the best of them, each word an inspired gem, all around him unfettered talent, miners masking arduous tasks, supplemented by jollified banter, so many questions to ask, deep conversations from men in the corner, debating equality, fair wages for all, Richard Llewellyn observed, looking beyond the beer glass, magnifying each poignant word. During times of darkness, the valley folk did rally, and inspired the epic tale, How Green Was My Valley. Did I really go down that mine shaft, to the bottom of that pit? A mere boy, not even my boots would fit. A tommy box, torn trousers and shameless holy socks I now sit upon the hillside as if time had never passed I was always a miner's son, just a memory from the past The enormous task of restoring the integrity of the Ogurvach to its natural state was one of the outstanding achievements of this reclamation project
So much change, history must be told. Valley pride must not be buried or misplaced for young or old. Generations should remember that coal from land was hewed. The consequences devastation. From the bowels of the earth, grey slag heaps were spewed. It's now time to embrace a healthy solution. Yes, a wind revolution. Mother Nature's gentle hand, bathe thou green and pleasant land. Remove the dust from the valley's head. I hear the miners whisper. Oh, breathe in the clean air, boys. A cornfield where colliers once walked a path are today indistinctly obscured by the growth of purple heather and varying shades of grass. The natural fossil fuel once hewed from underground, replaced by exploding greenery with a calming, rustling sound. The shadows of miners and families who walked this very vale now float down the Ogurvach in a coracle without a sail. For those not to have witnessed the effect of atramentous coal that once upon a time covered the valley floor, it is difficult to comprehend the unity in spirit that lay deep in the valley's soul. The treacherous landscape evolved like the shevelled pyramids. Without symmetry, the ashen mounds prevailed until the halls were backfilled and the colliery was finally derailed. nest risen from the ashes, the embers now dampened, the meadows belay the scars. All's well that ends well, the starship enterprise has lifted off, our next excursion, planet Mars. Oh dad, will my valley ever recover from its heart attack? God only knows my boy, it's carnage, bloody carnage. Hope springs eternal in the human breast. Man never is, but always to be blessed. The soul, uneasy and confined from home, rests and expatiates in a life to come. So, my son, save your sorrow, for tomorrow is another day. Well, boys, how green was our valley? Do even the heavy clouds are weighted down with that cursed dust. I can hardly see the light of day. Ha! <laughs> Someone shouted they'd seen the sun. No, it's just the shadow of Avanogur carrying downstream its pernicious rust. Will my valley ever recover? Once an active coal mine, then redundant land, overwhelming ashes cut off the collier's hand. From the shadows arose the phoenix, green meadows did appear. The rusty oven augur tumbled down the valley like a collier's pointed spear. Washing away the scars, the small red nook proudly preened its feather. A new landscape, no more planet Mars, just green grass and majestic purple heather. A small red valley. From red to grey, as the coal heaved its way, covering ground on the surface and dust on the land. The heart had been taken from man and from boy, leaving a valley to recover to its natural soil. The valley's again red, and the pits may be dead, but the memories will always live on.
Please take care of your environment and promise you it will take care of you. Don't believe me? Then listen to Idris in part two. For a better place to live, I couldn't wish for better. Fantastic.